Good morning. Good morning. It is good to welcome you as we come together to worship God today. Uh, as we uh, do so either here or we welcome also welcome those who will be worshiping with us online. Uh, it is always good in whatever way and fashion uh, to be in worship of our Lord and to lift up our prayers and our praises to God. So it's always good to welcome you as we come together in worship. Um, as far as announcements, one this morning, the beautiful flowers that are adorning our sanctuary are uh, by the family of John O'Neill and in his memory. So we uh, are very thankful for the family for sharing those with us and we share our love and our prayers continually with you. As we uh, begin our service then, I wonder if you will join with me in a time of prayer. Let us turn to God and uh, seek to center our lives, our hearts, our minds on our worship of God today. Will you join me in this time of prayer? Almighty God, you are truly beyond our comprehension, and yet you know each one of us completely. In fact, you know us better than we know ourselves. And you call us to a journey of faith, trusting us to follow you. So Lord, as we worship you today, may we hear your voice speaking to us. May we hear your call to us as we bring our worship to you in Jesus name. Amen. Will you join with me now as we affirm our faith using those historic words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We prepare now to turn again to the Lord in prayer as we do so. I know that there are a number of people, a number of concerns on our hearts in the day. And, uh, some of those are shared in print in our bulletins, and some will be lifting up from the depths of our hearts. And we are uh, also uh, especially being asked to pray as a community for these today, uh, for the family of John O'Neill, uh, for the family of Buddy Hyatt, uh, who uh, was just here last Sunday playing the organ for us. Um, for the family of Johnny Daly, for Titus Martin and the family of Phyllis Martin, for Mary West, Ray Barbary, Mary Graham Love, Mary Dale Rhodes, Ann Willis, Pat Bryant, Clem Nash, Mary Bob Barrow, Laura Ball, Bernice Hardy, Caleb Beard, Judy Lunn, Chris Axelberg, Mike Baker, Evelyn and Avenet, David Newman, Tara Benton, Buster Murphy, Paul Burchett, Larry and Kathy Vick, Patty Burke, uh, continuing prayers for all affected by COVID-19, uh, for the frontline workers, uh, for God's guidance and healing grace and peace in our uh, country and in our world in such uh, troubling times. Uh, for those homebound, those in care facilities, and members of our military, both near and deployed far from home. Uh, we lift all these up to the Lord today as we pray, and I invite you, as I say, to lift up from your hearts those who are on your hearts and minds as we now turn to the Lord again in prayer. Creating God, you do indeed know us deeply. In the mystery of your love, you see who we are, and you see who we might become. You call us by name. You invite us to follow. Lord, we hear you, but we are so often and so easily distracted by many things. We hear you, and yet we are afraid to answer. So we pray today that you'd open our hearts to your voice, open our hearts to your invitation, give us courage to follow, lead us in the depths of your love so that we might set aside our doubts, our fears, our distractions to answer you faithfully. We are here to worship you, O oh God, waiting to hear your word to us. Help us recognize your voice as we listen for your guidance, not only during this time of worship, but in all times of our lives. And may we be strengthened to share your love so that the bereaved and the lost and those facing times of great upheaval might find your grace to be all-sufficient. And let us celebrate the peace we gain as we share signs of your blessing and healing wisdom in our community, in our country, and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear all of our prayers today. And now we who are many and in different places gather in one voice to pray to you the prayer that our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Continue to be faithful to God in worship of God uh, by the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. Uh, of course, there are many ways to do that. There are baskets at the entrance and exit ways as you come in or go out today. Uh, you can do that by mail, P.O. Box 508 uh, at the church, or you can uh, do it uh, by our website, queenstreetchurch.org, clicking on the giving tab, or by texting 7325, or texting Queen Street in all caps to 73256. Let us continue to be faithful in our worship of God this way, as God is always and ever faithful to us in pouring out God's blessings upon us. I want to offer up a prayer now, a prayer of thanksgiving and blessing.
for those offerings that have been received and will be received. So will, will, you, will you join me again in a time of prayer? God of life and love, we bring our offerings to you, knowing that all that we have comes from you. And Lord, as we hear your call and as we answer you with all that we have and all that we are, we pray that you would use our gifts and that you would use us for your work of peace and justice in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson for today is going to be an Old Testament lesson from the book of 1 Samuel. I invite you to read with me either in your bulletins or in your Bibles or in your Bibles at home. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3 and the first 10 verses. Let us now receive this word of the Lord in our midst today. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me one more time? Great and gracious God, I pray now that you'd search and try the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that you would find them to be pleasing and acceptable to you. And I pray that you'd move me out of your way, move all obstacles out of your way, and that your voice be heard. We have gathered wherever we are in worship of you to hear you speaking to us. And so speak now, Lord, as we, your servants, are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. In a previous appointment at a time actually not so long ago when uh, everybody had landlines and to call someone you uh, had to pick up your phone and actually dial the number uh, to reach that person, uh, I had occasion to call one of the ladies in the church about one of our ministries. Uh, her number, the last four digits of her number, were one number off from another lady in the church. One was 7077, the other was 7070. And so I dialed the number, and immediately when the person answered, I realized I had dialed the wrong number. Now... I didn't think I could just say, oh, sorry, wrong number, and hang up. And as pastor, how do you tell someone, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you. <laughs> so I just uh, sort of on the spot just, you know, made it kind of a um, wellness check, even though I had just seen her the, uh, a day before in church. You know, how are you? And I guess I wasn't uh, very good at it because she called on and she said, Pastor, did you mean to call me? And I had to be honest. I had to confess and tell her what I had done. And she said, that's okay. People do that all the time. And she mentioned another uh, lady who had since passed on. And she said, 
uh, she was always calling me when she meant to call the other person. So she, she let me off the hook, as they say. I guess it's good to know who's calling and good to know who you're calling. Well, in Samuel's case, it was God who was calling. It was God who was calling. God had known Samuel since before Samuel was born. Uh, Samuel's mother, Hannah, was unable to conceive a child. And so in her despair, she prayed uh, one day to God and said, God, if you will let me bear a son, I promise that I will dedicate that son to you. And God heard her prayer and answered her request. And she was faithful to the promise that she made with God. So Samuel grew up in the tabernacle. He grew up with uh, the priest Eli as his mentor. He grew up uh, living in a place where the Ark of the Covenant, the uh, throne seat of God, was right there in proximity to him. God was all around Samuel and had been around Samuel since even before he was born. But Samuel didn't recognize it yet. Samuel didn't recognize it yet. So in those night hours when God called Samuel, Samuel didn't know that it was God calling. He thought it was Eli. In fact, three times he goes down to Eli's room, wakes him up, and a, a weary, bleary-eyed priest looks at Samuel and says, No, it wasn't me. I was asleep. Go back. Lie down again. Three times he goes in and wakes Eli up until finally Eli starts to catch on. Somebody's calling this boy. So next time you hear the voice, say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And the rest, as they say, is history. It's a history of a great prophet being raised up for the people by God. It's a history of one, as the scripture says, had the Lord's presence in a mighty way with him. It's the history of one, again, as the scripture says, who the Lord did not let his words fall to the ground. But it's a history that began with the art of listening. It's a history that began with the art of listening. You know, the art of listening is uh, seemingly a forgotten art and a forgotten skill in this day and time. But here's one thing for sure that we can count on. Just, just as God was all around Samuel, just as God knew Samuel even before he was born, so God is surrounding us and God knows us even before we were born. God's Word is in and around us. It's we who fail to listen. It's we who don't hear, who don't listen, who don't respond. And when we aren't listening, when God is speaking, when we aren't listening, we don't hear and we miss that chance to know who is speaking to us. So in today's time then, where do we encounter the voice of God? How does the voice of God come to, come to us? Well, it, it, it comes to us now in the midst of worship. It comes to us when we read and study the Bible. It comes to us when we pray and and, and particularly when we make listening part of our daily prayers. It comes to us in moments of quiet solitude. But the fact of the matter is, and, and, and uh, uh, I speak for myself, and I know I, I, I probably speak for many of you, we seem to be too busy. We're too busy to notice. We're too busy to receive that Word of God. We're too busy to listen to God, to receive that Word of God in our lives. Not only are we are too busy with activity, we're too busy with worry. We're too busy with fear. We're too busy with disdain and hate and prejudice. We're too busy being self-absorbed and closed off 
to receive God's revelations to us. And so my hope and my prayer for myself and for all of us is that we might make a reasoned, intentional effort to slow down. Slow down our lives, our hearts, our minds from racing ahead of God and slow down long enough to hear and to listen and to follow. Then, then we'll know who is calling. We'll hear the Word of God. We'll hear God speaking to us because truly, uh, this I also uh, know and affirm that God is speaking to each one of us. God speaks to each one of us. God calls to us in different ways. In, in ways um, that many times are unique to each one of us because we are unique creations of a Creator God. And listening to that voice, responding, hearing, that's what holds us in our faith. That's what helps us to realize that it is in God that we live and move and have our being. And if we've lost that sense of God speaking to us, if we've lost that uh, ability to listen, if, if, if we become too busy, too preoccupied, then let us recover it. Let us restore it to its rightful place. Let us celebrate and revere the fact that God speaks to us. You know, the, the Psalter for today is Psalm 139. Beautiful psalm in the book of Psalms. And in that, the psalmist begins with these words. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Lord, you have searched me and have known me. And throughout the remainder of that psalm, the psalmist goes on to say that God knows everything about us. God has known everything about us since before we were born. So the story of Samuel then, I think gives us great hope. It is a story of great hope. It's a story of a God who knows every single thing there is to know about us and is at work in our lives, is at work through us if we allow God to be so, is at work in the world. It's amazing, you think about it, the Creator God who spoke into being all that is knows everything about us and is calling to us, is speaking to us, knows us better than we know ourselves and has known us since before we were born. Now, you know, we may not wake in the middle of the night to find God's voice calling our name, but we can rest assured God is still speaking to us. God is still calling to us. God is still revealing God's self to us. God is revealing things about ourselves to us that we didn't even know about ourselves. Because God knows us more completely than anyone else, even ourselves. And so let us make ourselves available to God through listening, through concentrating on what that still small voice that continues to speak today is saying to us, that voice of God that continues to speak to us. And as we listen, then we become available uh, to God and we become more affirming, more forgiving, more helping, more giving, more caring. We become better listeners. We become more, the more we listen to God, the more attuned to God's voice we are, and the more we know God's voice speaking to us. And that leads us to hear, to listen, to follow, so that we might impact and change and transform lives, transforming people's lives for the sake of the gospel, for Jesus Christ. Thomas Merton uh, was a 20th century American Trappist monk. I love reading his writings. Uh, he was active particularly during 
uh, the civil rights era of the 1960s. And he once wrote, It seems to me that I have greater peace and am close to God when simply orienting my life fully and completely toward what seemed to be required of me at a time like this. What seems to be required of me at a time like this. Going further to say, I am convinced there is a need in the world for something I can provide and there is a need for me to provide it. God created you with a purpose. God speaks to your life in unique ways. God calls to you and there is a need in the world for something that you can provide. And there is a need for you to provide it. And we become prepared to do so by hearing God's word, by listening to it, by allowing it to shape and transform and inform our lives so that we might follow God and follow God's leading and guidance to go and transform the world for Jesus Christ. So who's calling you? Who is that that's calling you even right now? God. God is calling you. Will you seek to hear? Will you strive to listen? Will you yearn to follow? Who's calling you? God is the one who's calling you. And as God calls each one of us, as God speaks to each one of our hearts, may the answer that each one of us gives be like Samuel's. Speak, Lord. I am your servant and I am listening. Speak now, Lord. I am your servant and I am listening. Doing that will transform our lives and allow God to work through us to transform lives of others and indeed the world through the grace and power and love of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for worshiping with us today. It has been good to be together in this place. It's been good to be with those who will be worshiping online. Uh, as we uh, conclude our service then, let me offer up these words of benediction for us all. You know, the, the art of listening has indeed become a lost art. But God is calling. So let us hear. Let us listen. Let us follow. So that we can respond in joy to God's loving call to us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.